Okay, here we are in the shade house for part two. I forgot to include this pretty little bud in the other video, so I'm going to use it for the introduction. So part one of the collection update was in the Lattice House, and this is part two. So welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for all of those people that remember to hit that subscribe button and give my videos a thumbs up. I really appreciate you. All right, so we're gonna get started on my um, Orchid Collection update, part two in the Shade House. Here we are, back in the Shade House. There's a lot going on in here, like I said. Everything's starting to wake up. Love this time of year. Lots of mounts that the roots are starting to grow. We've got some new growths. They're starting to grab on to those mounts. So we'll take a look at some of that. We'll take a look at some spikes that are coming and some blooms that are already here. Starting with this Vanda that is still in bloom. This is Vanda Kultana Gold by Kultana Scarlet. Really beautiful. Still hanging on. <laughs> she is all right so we have wrinkled alia zigbiana nice new growth and those roots are starting to reach out and grab on over here we have a new vanda in bloom look at that this is vanda crew chum dark night Don't think it's fragrant. There's just a very slight hint of something. Um, it's only, only been open for a couple days, so maybe it will start to pick up. Got some recent mounts, starting to make some roots and grab on. Now you'll notice I don't do anything with these old roots. I literally take it out of the pot. You can even see some old medium stuck in there. I don't do anything to mess with those roots. <laughs> Pull it right out of the pot. Just kind of wiggle out whatever medium wants to fall out and stick it right on the mount. It will sort itself out later, but I don't want to mess with it and stress it out too much. So when I mount them, there's very minimal attention. I don't cut off a bunch of roots. I don't um, mess with the media too much. Now right down in here, there is a spike developing on Encyclia tempensis. This is a Florida native. And it's got a little buddy down here. Right there, there's another little plant. Little vandacious, vandacious type. It's been struggling a little bit. Um, it grows lots of roots. The roots come out and as soon as it touches anything, I'm almost thinking about just hanging it bare root by itself because I've tried all different kinds of media. As soon as the roots touch, they stop growing. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't like doesn't like wood. It doesn't like bark. It doesn't like spag sphagnum moss. It doesn't like anything. As soon as the roots touch anything, <laughs> they stop growing. So I don't know. Still thinking about what to do with that little guy. All right, so moving right along. Over here, this little beauty starting to take off. This is Vanda Motes Adorbs. It's a primary hybrid between Vanda Christensoniana and Vanda Ampulacea. Okay, and I like this one too because it gets a lot of red pigment and the cyanin in the leaves. It's really pretty. Even the little cakey down there is starting to. It's getting lots of cakeys too. I don't know if we can focus. It's wanting to focus on everything else. But down in there, even the little cakey is trying to bloom. Now this one. Now, I know there's different pronunciations. I don't know which one is correct. But Shiloshista or Shilochista, Kyloshista, something like that. It has going on in there I think I see two and they're probably so tiny you probably can't see them there's one there and one there two flower spikes and then there's something else there that is green 
It's not dark like what I think are the flower spikes. So I'm thinking the green one might be a leaf that decided not to grow. I don't know. But if it's a spike, there's three spikes coming. So excited about that one. This one, I've got the tag inside. I'll find it later and um, put it on the screen. Look at all those flower spikes. This came with little tiny flower spikes <laughs> right along the the, the um, center there. And now they just keep growing and growing. They've been in spike for a very, very long time, probably months. This one came from High Desert Orchids. High Desert Orchids is quickly becoming one of my favorites. Every I love the little mini plants and every single plant they've sent to me has been in spike and in great condition. Not every single one, there was two that weren't, but most of them has been in, have been in spike and in very good condition. Okay. This little one is fading. The, the flowers are starting to get discolored. I, um, I'm seeing a lot of evidence of thrips. So I sprayed a little bit and I probably got a little bit on um, the flower and that's probably why it's turning. Same thing happened with the um, Dia Catlea, Catlea um, Chantilly Lace. I got some, some spray on those flowers. This is Vanda Motes Pixie Dust, which is Vietnamica by Vanda Motes Ruby Pixie. Really cute little flower. And this one, I think, my best guess, is this is Ascocentrum, which I think is now Vanda, Mini Autumn. I think it's a Mini Autumn. I think when I bought it, it was incorrectly tagged Gary Eye. But I think this one's Mini Autumn. In here, we've got some buds forming. This one is the same as the other yellow one that I showed in a few videos back. Um, I think it was What's in Bloom in, in January. This is a bit of sunshine. Some more buds forming. Different plant though, not same plant. It's not getting to bloom again on the same plant. Over here. Sorry if I'm moving too quick. We've got this little beauty peeking out over the leaves. This is Vanda Mem. Theon Chai by Rinko Stylus Gigantia. And this one smells delicious. Okay. This little thing up here, let me see if I can get around. I might just bring it down. This little one, come on, come down. This is the cutest little thing it had other spikes that the buds all blasted when I was doing that in and out thing when the weather was bad, but um, I'm not sure how to pronounce this one. I'm gonna put the, just gonna put the tag on the screen, but I love little tiny flowers. So that one's a cutie, really into that one. All right. Moving right along, Dendrobium Samurai, still in bloom. Looking good. Oh, I forgot to show you the spike on my other um, Encyclia. All of the Encyclias are in spike. It is, where's the spike? There it is. It is Encyclia time. Get my fingers out of the way. Got a spike there. That one's a little funky. We don't need to look at that one. <laughs> Rinko Stylus Gigantia is just about done, but you can see we had some pollinators out here doing their thing. We've got a seed pod forming. <laughs> All right. Let's see if I can get up here. We've got a Tulumnia. I'm in the sun. I can't see anything happening on my camera right now. We've got a Tulumnia, the one facing backwards is a more open bloom, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to twist that camera around and get a good shot of it. So maybe in March, we'll get a good view of that one when it opens further. All right, moving right along. 
we had some flower spikes on this phalaenopsis. This phalaenopsis um, is a big white one, but instead of having yellow on the inside, it has pink. Okay, this is phalaenopsis, star, April's coming. Nice big spikes there. Now this one, I'm so excited about. These blooms have been a long time coming. This plant almost died. This is actually one of the first plants that I ever got. So it's been in my collection for a long time and it almost died. This plant is a pest magnet. I have struggled and struggled to keep the scale and mealybugs off this plant. It has almost died multiple times on me because of the pest infestation. I don't spray very often. I spray like literally twice a year at most because I have that pollinator garden and I just don't want to have those two worlds collide. Um, as you can see, the pollinators do come in here sometimes, not too often, but they do. The, the butterfly garden is um, a little ways away from here, but I just, as a rule, don't spray more than twice a year. I spray before it picks up out there, after it slows down and before it picks up. So um, right at the beginning of winter and right before spring are the only times I spray. So in between, I'm out here with an alcohol swab or um, maybe some neem oil just trying to spot treat. And you know, that's not super effective when you have a big infestation. So this plant has really struggled but look at all those buds coming. I'm so excited. All right, let's see what else. Check this one out. Got this one from RF in Spike. So you can see the little buds are starting to open up. It's not in full bloom yet. So I will bring that one back to you once it's in full bloom. So excited about that one. Some beautiful little flowers opening up in there. All right, and my Leptodes bicolor. I had no idea what was going on with this plant. I, there was these little nubs. See like there and there, there were these little nubs that were on this plant. They've been on there for months. And so I didn't know if they were ever gonna develop. I didn't know what was going on, but I have flower spikes coming. I'm not sure if you can see them. Let me try to get the plant to be still. Right there, there's a flower spike. I feel confident saying those are definitely flower spikes. Watch me be wrong, but look at that. They're all over, I'm so excited. And this one, that is a flower spike. The thing that's starting to come down and curl, looks like a root, it's not a root, it's a flower spike. There's another one there. And there's a third one in there somewhere, I'm not sure where. I'm really excited about that one. Okay, the ground orchids. They're still going strong. Lots of blooms back in there. My, um, what is that thing? I'm drawing a blank. Anyway, that plant is recovering. <laughs> what is it? I can't remember. Of course, live video and, or taking a video and I, forget the name of it but anyway it is um, starting to recover from being burnt to a crisp <laughs> um, based on other videos I was watching I thought it could handle more Sun than it could and I didn't just stick it on the Sun I like I acclimated it but no it did not want to be in full Sun it got burnt pretty good so back there protected in that corner and it's happy and growing and come back coming back to life now look at this one I hope you can see it in the lighting I can't see my camera at all so I'm just making a guess about where that camera is and compared to the flower but I just wanted to show you this one because um, if I can find a picture of it from the previous bloom I want to show you the difference between what this flower looks like when it first opens and after it's been open for a while. This is 
um, and I always get it wrong, it's either BC or BL, Yellowbird. When it first opens, it's pink. And then as it develops, it turns yellow. I just think that's cool. Oh, I know it's not an orchid, but this is my um, carnivorous plant. It is a pitcher plant. And I've been really struggling with finding its happy place. I did find it, but it was in my shower, <laughs> which is a little inconvenient. So it had to come back out here to the shade house and we're just gonna keep moving it around and seeing um, what I can do for it. It's pictures keep drying up, you know, so just working on that. And what I'm reading online is I think it needs more sun. So I'm, I'm gonna try to give it more sun without burning it. I'm trying to find that fine line. She's like an orchid, right? Got some nice roots attaching on these mounts. See, there's another one. Didn't take that media off, just take it out of the pot, throw it up there. And let things happen naturally. I don't want to damage the roots by messing with them too much. They're already getting disturbed, so I want to disturb them as little as possible when I'm putting them on that mount. Okay, look at this one. This is one of my new ones. Latintheria insectifera. Let me get a better angle so you can see. This is, I don't know if you can see that right there. This is a little bud forming. That bare stem is making me insane. I don't like that look at all, but I'm trying to be patient to see if it gets a cakey or, um, and it's upon a podial, so it's not going to get any more pseudobulbs. It's not going to, it's got a nice new root bulb there too. Squirrel. Um, but yeah, we've got a bud forming. So definitely not messing up with, with it until that flower forms and it's done flowering. Um, but I might be cutting off all of this bare stuff back here and just moving it up, remounting it up on that mount. I don't know. The bare stem bugs me. A little weird like that, but. Okay. Here we go. I think that's all of the flower spikes. There were tons out here, so I may have missed some. Focus, there we go. Ah, uh, that's a pretty view. So we'll stop right here so I can say thank you for watching. If you're still here, this is a long one. Probably should have broken this one up in two, huh? It's a really long one. But there was so much happening. So many spikes, so many blooms. So hopefully you stuck it out and all everything in spike and in bloom and everything's starting to wake up all right i hope you have a wonderful day <laughs> if you still stuck around if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and i will see you soon